Welcome back to California State University, Bakersfield 2021 Graduate Studies Summit. My name is Luis Vega, and I'm pleased to introduce Ms. Adrian Silva, CSUB Graduate Advisor. Ms. Silva has been working with CSUB graduate students since 2018 and is currently enrolled in the Masters of Public Administration program. Welcome, Adrian. Please turn on your camera and say hello. All right, well, thank you so much, Dr. Vega. Um, so I'm really excited to be here today and talk to you about our CSUB graduate program and discovering them a little bit more. Very excited. This is one of the things I do every day is talk to different prospective graduate students about our programs. One of the questions we asked when you registered was, what is your desired academic discipline? I had several people say, I don't know, undecided. Of others that definitely knew what they wanted to study, right? The different types of desired academic disciplines that are out there are, for example, arts and humanities. And I'll go a little bit more into detail what programs we have that provide that are provided here at CSUB with those different academic disciplines. Arts and humanities, business and public administration, natural sciences, mathematics and engineering, and social sciences and education. What kind of graduate programs that matter do you think we have? All the pictures I'm showing will kind of give you a hint. So Masters of Arts in English, that is a graduate program that matters. So if that's something you are interested in as an academic discipline, your, your graduate program matters. Masters of Arts in History and the Masters of Arts in Spanish. These are all our fabulous graduate programs that we offer at the School of Arts and Humanities. So now let's talk about the different types of graduate programs that work here at CSUB, the Masters of Science in Biology and the Masters of Science in Geology, those are definitely graduate programs that work. You're doing work and a lot of research, a lot and lots of research. So if you like research, this is the type of graduate program you're going to want to go ahead and look into or apply for. Yeah, so the School of Natural Sciences, Mathematics and Engineering will uh, be the school that will house these two different graduate programs that we offer. But we have a new one. So it's the Masters of Science in, uh, the Masters of Science in Computer Science. That is one of our newest graduate programs here at CSUB. The other one that we have in our School of Natural Sciences, Mathematics and Engineering is the Master of Science in Nursing with a Family Nurse Practitioner degree. Let's go ahead and move on to a different type of program here at CSUB. So graduate programs that mean business. This one is so obvious. This is like one of those pop quiz tests that you get in school where the answer is right in front of you, but you just overthink it. What kind of programs that we offer here at CSUB do you think we have that mean business? There you go. If any of you said the master's in healthcare administration because it's on there or the master's of public administration, you are correct. And we also offer the master's of business administration through the school of business and public administration. Graduate programs that make a difference. What kind of programs do you think make a difference? MS in counseling psychology. MS in kinesiology. Yes. Kind of two very different, almost if you think about them, right? MA in educational administration. MA in special education. Can you see how these make a difference? So if you want to make a difference as a career goal or that's your passion, these are some programs you should really look into. Educational counseling, masters of social work. And these programs are at our School of Social Sciences and Education. You have to match your undergrad major with your graduate program degree. You do not need to do that. The reason why I bring this up, especially in the School of Social Sciences and Education, as you can see, the school for undergraduate degrees or majors, it's, it's huge. And once you are ready to get into a graduate program, you don't have to stick to, um, like if you were a psychology major, you don't have to go straight to the counseling psychology program. You actually can, if you wanted to, you can jump on over and get a master's of social work or even better. Maybe if you meet some of the prereqs, you can maybe go in and do one that from the School of Business and Public Administration. Maybe you wanna do psychology in some sort of public administration role. That is very correct. You do not need to match your undergraduate degree with your graduate program. Thinking about a desired academic discipline, please take into consideration your passions, what you really wanna master at, other than the fact that you already, I wouldn't say mastered in your undergraduate, but you, you definitely took two, almost three years of dedicated work to a major 
and maybe even a minor. This picture, and it's again located in the School of Social Sciences and Education. And if you are interested in learning more about the doctoral program, we will be having a session in regards to the doctoral program and how to apply or get your application ready for a doctoral type of program. But our doctoral program is the doctoral program in educational leadership. Kind of has a theme with the School of Social Sciences and Education, right? We have undergrad, graduate, master's. And we also have a doctoral program. So CSUB is definitely the place you want to apply or even look and see what we offer to match your passions and goals. It's a great place to do all three, all right? So currently on the screen right here, I have the 17 graduate programs that we are offering. We do have two additional ones that are from our extended university and they are online. The extended university for CSUB, it's still, you're still going to get our professors teaching uh, for you in those classes. It's just a little bit different. It's the only reason why I didn't add that on there. And our discovering CSUB graduate programs. And if anybody has any questions about anything, I am the CSUB graduate advisor and I answer all questions. Um, if it's not CSUB, but it's anywhere else, you can contact me or you can meet with me. And I will help um, kind of give you some more information on, on what to look for for the different schools. Uh, that's my job. I need you to go to graduate school. And, oh, you don't have to just get one master's degree. If you really are interested in different careers or have different passions, please think about getting several graduate degrees or get into the credentials program and become a teacher. Continue your education. It's the best thing for, for all of us. And it gives you something to do um, instead of just watching Netflix sometimes. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> do we have any questions? Yes, we do. We have one from Trinidad who's asking, what kinds of career benefits from MPA? Oh, so many. So the Master's of Public Administration, and I'm actually currently also in that program. For careers in um, private, no, not private, that's MBA. <laughs> Public, city, state, county, nonprofit, type of organizations. So a lot of our graduates from our MBA program actually already are working for the county of Kern or for the county of LA. We have some really amazing alumni who work for the city, the state, who have actually maybe even moved out of state and work again for the government. It's one of those programs where you're, where you're gonna learn the insights uh, or the, how a public institution or a public organization runs because it's very different than a private organization. And so I have an MBA. I wanted to, I learned everything about private institutions and how to make money for them and how to make them successful. And then when I started working here at CSUB, well, we're a public institution and I really wasn't understanding how, how it works. That's why I decided to apply and go to the Masters of Public Administration. And let me tell you something, it's been so beneficial um, I have so many aha moment, moments, either in the classroom, when I'm reading a book, when I'm doing research, or even when I'm participating in something at work and a decision has been made, I no longer question it. I'm, I'm not like, why? I Now I understand because of learning the different things I've learned in Masters of Public Administration. So I hope that helps. And again, if you want to meet with me, I'm so willing and we can talk about all the different types of careers you can go into. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> um, Trinidad says thank, says thank you. Okay, so we have another one from Eric. Looks like it's a kind of a two part, but so is educational administration mainly meant for P through 12 schooling? Can this be used in post secondary education? Or to work in post secondary education, would it be better to get into educational counseling with student affairs? I would suggest that's another thing I do. If I don't know the answer, I'm going to kind of give you a resource. That's a, a really great question, and um, thank you for asking it. But um, I would prefer you get it from an expert or somebody who's actually in the field and has actually done it, okay? Dr. Jackson would like to answer. Go ahead. Oh, yes, perfect, thank you. Yeah, so um, Adrian, I can, I can take this question. Um, thank you, Eric, for asking um, this question. Educational administration, our educational administration program really is designed for um, leaders in the P through 12, uh, K through 12 setting, uh, sorry, K through 12 setting. Um, so it's not really suited for higher education administration. It's more um, uh, elementary and secondary education administration. 
Um, you also asked about our educational counseling program, and that program has two tracks. It has a school counseling program, which is designed um, for, um, for counselors in the K through 12 settings. Then we also have track in our educational counseling program, a student affairs in higher education track. And that one helps train uh, academic advisors in higher ed. So that would be the place that you would look for that. Now, one program you didn't mention, Eric, is our doctoral program in educational leadership. That's another program that could prepare you for higher education leadership or for K through 12 education leadership. But generally speaking, in, um, if you're interested in going into higher education, uh, generally speaking, folks pursue degrees in a particular disciplinary area, an academic discipline. And for that, I would encourage you to talk with Dr. Vega, the Chancellor's Doctoral Incentive Program, which can offer $30,000 forgivable loan to help support you in pursuing your PhD in the hopes of returning and becoming a professor in the CSU system. So you definitely want to look for that program and perhaps Dr. Vega can, can say more if he'd like. Thank you very much, Dr. Jackson. And I hope the link that I put there for a workshop that we will be having uh, in October 22nd. And I encourage you to come to that workshop, Eric, if we have time. We're going to provide a lot of valuable information. But I wanted to give Katrina a chance to also, she was raising her hand earlier. She graduated from the Educational Counseling. So Katrina, would you like to add anything to that? Oh, I was just kind of doodling what Dr. Jackson said. But I know if you're interested in educational administration on the higher ed side, ed counseling could put you there because a lot of the the positions that are administrator level in higher ed do require a master's and educational counseling with student affairs emphasis could could count for jobs in that field. So that's that's all I wanted to say. There is one from Odessa who would like to know, would you recommend taking a gap year after finishing undergraduate degree? I'm going to put this like almost like a panelist option, please. So if Dr. Jackson, Dr. Vega, anybody who is working um, with us here and works directly with graduate students, please, please answer also in your opinion. I've seen students go right through it, go from undergrad straight to actually doctorate's program and be very successful. And I've seen other graduate uh, prospective students who took a year and they never went back because they actually liked working and they didn't really need the master's program for their current job or for their passion. So you can take that gap year if you want. It's up to you, but it's very, it's such a, a personal opinion of why you're doing it and if it's the right thing. But I took 10 years before I went into my master's program and I loved it. And I know someone who waited 37 years. So one gap year to 37 years, there you go. You'll still end up at graduate school, okay? <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I think it's based on your situation and just whatever your passions are for your future, how you envision your future. And that's fluid, right? It's going to change as you mature and you're, you, know, you have your life experiences. So completely agree. It's based on the situation. There is no right answer. Some people say wait. Some people say don't wait. Look at your situation and make that best decision for yourself. Can I, can I um, share one thing about the gap year question? And uh, I, know, I know a number of people do uh, support the idea of taking a gap year. It gives you time to mature and really figure out what you want. One thing I do want to remind you of though, if you have student loans, once you stop your enrollment in, in higher education, you have a grace period but then you have to start paying that, that money back. And if you just be aware that if you're going to take a break, that bill is going to come due until you re-enroll. I did not take a break between my, my time as an undergraduate and my time in graduate school. That worked out well for me. And I did go from an undergraduate program right into a PhD program. I've had a number of students over the years um, maybe had a rough start with their undergraduate degree and their GPA wasn't as strong before they sort of really figured out what direction they were heading, figured out what their passion was. 
And so um, for them going to pursue a master's degree gave them an opportunity to really focus and get their GA, have their GPA be stronger so that they could apply for a more competitive doctoral program. Again, it really depends on your situation, but I did want to mention that there is uh, financial implications if you do pause your studies between undergrad and graduate school. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. A very thorough answer. I appreciate it. Um, looks like there is going to be a session uh, about uh, writing strong letters of recommendation. So if you don't mind, uh, feel free to book an appointment with Adrian. you know, who's always here. She lives here practically. Thank you, Adrian, for the hard work. Thank you very much, Adrian, again, for the excellent presentation. Jennifer, for helping us. So uh, everybody, see you soon, okay? <laughs> Bye for now.